must begin with enhancing study skills where i will run you through some key skills that can improve the way that you study and then uh, we'll talk about how those study skills can actually be put to practical use both in the classroom and in the all important study holidays i'll tell you a story this is something that happened uh, i guess some 3 or 4 years ago it was uh, end of the first day of a training program it was held uh, in one of the chennai hotels and that evening it was raining so i at the end of the program along with a friend of mine drove in my car we were somewhere uh, near west mamblam when a maruti car overtook me on the right side and uh, hit my car kissed my car if i could say that <laughs> and then went away and you know how our indian cars are whether you kiss them or hit them they all get spoiled so i told my friend uh, let's stop the car and see what has happened to the other car then my friend no he's a very good observer of people so he quickly observed who was in the other car and he said uh, that car is being driven by a lady so let us not stop our car i said why he said no in, in an accident where a male and a uh, women driver are involved the public will always support the women driver so let's go away i said no 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 in all fairness we must wait check what happened to that car we stopped our car that car of course happily went away it didn't stop at all that was day 1 on the second day it was again a rainy evening and this was somewhere near valluvar kotam okay i was going down the same friend of mine was there see there was a call taxi that overtook me on the left side and hit my car <laughs> a fellow stopped the car he got down and he said uh, sir uh, no you must pay me 2000 rupees i said you guy you overtake me on the left side which is not the right side to be in and on top of that you come and ask me money but that guy was very polite very nice guy so i said no there is no way that i can pay you then he said no 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 sir this is my first day meaning in my new job this is my first day if the boss uh, sees the damage to the car he will knock it out of my salary so i said i can't help that he said no 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 you must do something then uh, finally i think we decided to pay him 400 rupees because we thought okay uh, not only was he on his first job his car too had damage though it was no fault of mine we decided we'll pay him 400 rupees that was the end of the second day at the end of the third day that was also a rainy day we were uh, driving down almost at the same place and uh, my friend said day before some car hit us on the right yesterday some car hit us on the left today i don't know which car will do what and this person would not have even closed his mouth and a lorry came and hit from behind <laughs> until that day i never believed in the law of attraction okay <laughs> that day i said no if if you tell yourself bad things they will happen if you tell yourself good things they may or may not happen but if you tell yourself bad things they would happen if you pick up your study books and say you look at your income tax book or you look at your iska book or you look at your strategic financial management book and tell yourself no i will not understand i will not understand i will not understand you will not understand okay because the mind is very very powerful so it's very very important that we should seed in our mind suggest to our mind that we will be able to understand okay it is also therefore important that you need to tell yourself constantly yes i will get a rank yes i will get a rank but just telling yourself yes i'll get a rank yes i will get a rank will not help you also have to put in the perseverance the hard work etc therefore the first and most important study skill in my view is that one must be in a positive frame of mind while studying at least one should not be in a negative frame of mind while studying then there are a few other things and to do the few other things you will do an activity now you will do the activity in your mind and uh, i am going to put out some questions i am going to ask you some questions on arithmetic some questions on geography school geography some english question yes excellent now you think of a number inside of 10 any number from 1 to 10 you have thought you can even write on a piece of paper if you think you will forget multiply that number by 2 done you got a result add 8 to the result done you got a new result divide by 2 
done. Subtract the original number, the one which you thought first. Done. These are all my arithmetic questions. Now, you, you have a final number with you. I want you to pick the equivalent English alphabet. I'm just giving you a clue to tell you what is an equivalent English alphabet. If you now have the number 13 with you, the equivalent English alphabet is M. If you now have the number 8 with you, the equivalent English alphabet is H. You understood what I am saying? So you, you have the equivalent English alphabet? You got it? Think of a European country which starts with that equivalent English alphabet. Done? You have got the name of the country? Take the last letter of the name of that country. Done? Think of an animal whose name starts with that alphabet. That animal could be in Australia, that animal could be in England, wherever. You have thought of the name of the animal? Pick up the last letter of the name of the animal. Done? Think of a fruit which starts with that alphabet. How many of you here thought about Denmark? Kangaroo? Orange? Not bad here. How was I able to read your mind? Let's get into the message. The message is very, very simple. It's called the power of the process. I had a set of nine questions. I had structured those nine questions. When I say I know, I was not the inventor of this. Whoever invented this or discovered this had a set of nine questions. He structured it in a certain order. Go home, do it on your dad, do it on your mother, do it on your brother, do it on your sister, do it on whomsoever and you will become the star. You will be the Denmark, Garu and the Orange. The moral of the story is that there is a process. If you follow the process, that set of nine questions asked in that certain order gives a certain result. If you have a process, a methodical way of reading, then your output will also be good. There is that old saying in uh, the world of computer science that if you put in garbage, you will get garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. Similarly, if you, whatever may be your level of intelligence, even if it is not very great, if you have the right process, no, you feed in a raw material, have a good process, you will get a good end product. This is true in studies, that it is true in your articleship or in your internship, where an audit firm says, let's have this checklist, let's have this audit program. And many of us say, why should we have a checklist? If you have a checklist, the important thing is that if you follow that checklist, if you follow it diligently, you will get an output which is good. Second important study skill is that you need to have a process of studying. You need to have a way of studying. You need to have a method of studying. If you follow the method, then what subject which might look to be all madness will uh, appear to be quite simple. Now I am also going to request you to look at some aspects here. I am going to try to explain to you that in the midst of smart studying, it is not just hard studying that is important. People say, I have studied very hard. Uh, that's not what is required. Nobody wants you to study hard. People want you to study smart. And I am going to put out three, four examples of how smart study helps or what constitutes smart study. Read this and give me an answer. Eight. 9, 7, 8, 9. Anybody who saw 5? Because when I read this, I saw only 5. You saw 6? One step better. Okay, 5. Same wavelength. Good. Anybody who has seen 10? 11? Now, let me show you the same thing. Here are they. How many are there? 8 are there. 8 are there. How did you get 10? That F and the following. Okay. The, in the F and in the following, you read two more F. What is wrong with that? It is said following. The moral of the story is very simple. We have to you know when we read our question paper, when we read our textbook, we have to read very carefully because very intuitively we think that we know the answer. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling that most people read very quickly. Like he said, no, he saw phi. I also saw only phi because I conveniently forgot that off has an F there. And I also conveniently did not notice that there were three offs there. Okay. So we all tend to think, oh, we know. Whereas we have to be very, very careful when we read. 
if only this that we must read things very carefully we must read things with two magnifying glasses if that comes in i think the time is well spent i want somebody to read this 7h15m3 no 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 one second one second i'll i'll explain you you have to read there are no 7h15 that's a message that is there okay if you think it is a code it's a code you can do whatever go ahead and read it read it harder try it harder this message serves to prove how our minds can do amazing things impressive things in the beginning without even thinking about about it be proud only certain people can read this please forward if you can read this what is the moral the moral is that very often when we start reading something no we all tend to think oh no i can't do this but uh, as as she found it i think she was the best example to read it because when she began she read 7h15 which means that she had not come across this earlier and i'm sure she found it hard initially this message serves to prove and then as she started reading she was able to read very quickly because the confidence had built in so it it stitches back to what i originally said that if you tell your mind if you keep telling yourself that you can't read you can't achieve then it will not happen uh all that i'm trying to do is to put you through some examples to help you understand the fundamental point that you no know, we must have reading skills we must be positive in our line of thinking is there a difference between these two what is the difference you are the dinner that means if you eat i will come and eat you fine what is the difference here what is the moral of the story punctuation is important writing is important there are lots of guys who come and tell me no i have written sir that examiner did not understand if you write like this no examiner will understand and we all think no oh this is small mistake this is silly mistake i made a mistake in adding up or oh, you made a mistake in punctuating you are finished now read this finished what is the moral of the story if you write like this in the exam what will happen either uh, clockwise or anti clockwise whichever wise people might say reading this we might say oh, what is what is the problem the examiner has understood there are many people who say language is just about me talking and somebody else understanding language is not just about me talking and somebody else understanding language is also me talking properly and somebody else understanding properly so it is very 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 important that we pick up our writing skills well listen to this mr chairman 28 vacuums a week that's a lot of vacuums to sell and you only have seven salesmen certainly that means they got to sell 13 vacuums a piece you're right the 13 vacuum cleaners a piece yes sir what are you talking about Seven times thirteen is not twenty-eight. Yes, it is. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Mr. Chandler, seven times thirteen is twenty-eight. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Did you ever go to school, stupid? Yes, sir. And I come out the same way. Come here. You claim that seven goes into twenty-eight thirteen times? That's right. Now seven to eight once. Once. Now I'm going to carry the seven from here and put it under the eight. Seven from eight. One. One. A minute ago, I didn't use that little two. What are you going to do? I got to use that two now. I'm going to take it from there and I got to put it right there. All uh, right. Now seven to twenty-one. Three dimes. That's correct. Seven to twenty-eight. Thirteen. Oh right. no 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 no! Nothing of the kind. What kind of figures are these? Just a minute. It's got to come out right. We'll multiply this. <laughs> Go ahead. Multiply. Put down thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, that's right. And seven salesmen put that down. Seven sales. Now, you claim that seven times thirteen amounts to what? Twenty-eight. <laughs> Prove that. 
Seven times three? Uh, Twenty-one. Seven times one? Seven. Seven and one? Eight. And a two. Twenty-eight. Now, oh, wait a minute. How do you figure, boy? You can't. You're good. No, 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 you can't do That's that. That's right. No, nothing of the kind. We'll add this up. Adam? Put down thirteen uh, seven times. Okay. One. Two. two three. Three. Four. four five, five. Six. Six. Seven. seven. Now, wait a minute. You claim that all that added up amounts to what? Twenty-eight. If it does, you've got a job. Thank you. Three. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. You're hired. What is the moral that comes out of this story? If you learn something wrong the way that the gentleman learned it wrong, and uh, doesn't get, and that thing gets uh, assimilated in your mind on and on and on, then uh, at some point in time, you could have serious trouble. One of the important skills that good CAs must have is the ability to handle numbers. Okay, uh, that is why I'm fairly disappointed when people almost invariably pick up their calculator to do their computation. Good numbers crunching skill would also mean that when you look at a solution or when a piece of paper is put forward to you with a series of numbers out there, you should by mere inspection know prima facie whether the answer that you have put out is right or not. I now want you to do something and I want you to do this very honestly. Okay? What do you see there on that screen? Numbers. numbers. Now, there are lots of numbers there. I want you to identify number one. I will help you initially. Okay? And uh, number one is somewhere here in that far corner. Number two is somewhere in another far corner. You are able to locate number two. Yes. Number three you are able to locate. Yes. Now, you will have to locate one by one several numbers. I will give you about 45 seconds time. You should not identify number four until you have identified number three. You should not go to number five and you have to be honest to yourself unless you identify four. You understood what I am saying? Go identify as many numbers as you can and you have to go in the numerical order. Well, that should be fine. What number did you see last? 15, 12, 10, 5, 17, 19. Okay, fine. I have put this across in several places. On an average, people see about 17. Okay. If somebody has seen significantly more, it can only be that he is very quick. Now that you have understood this, I am going to show you the same picture. Okay, I am going to show you the same set of numbers, but I am going to give you a clue as to how to identify them. Now, I am going to tell you that 1 is in the first box, 2 is in the second box, 3 is in the third box, 4 is in the fourth box, 5 is in the fifth box, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9th, 10th is in the first. You understood what I told you? Yes, now, I will give you 30 seconds. Go find out how many numbers you can locate. Finished? How much have you seen? 40. 29. Okay, in any case, it is significantly more than the numbers that you told earlier. How were you able to find out more numbers now? Because there was a pattern. Because there was a pattern. Trust me when I tell you, in every subject, there is a pattern. 
in any subject in any topic in any chapter in any problem there is always a method in the madness there is always a structure there is always a pattern and your job is to look at patterns you need to look at patterns you need to break them into smaller components if you can identify the pattern and that is what you need to learn during your learning days either in the classroom or when you study at home you should identify designate patterns which is what i roughly call in classrooms principles rules etc so that you get to understand them well so we looked at the key things to writing we looked at some key things relating to reading we looked at some key things relating to arithmetic and i now told you about what is it to do smart study there are a few quick things that i thought i should supplement with reading skills when i buy a book whatever book it might be let us say i buy a textbook the first thing that i actually do is that i read the last page of the book not the last page the back cover the back cover then i go and look at the contents that means what are the various chapters there then uh, when i pick up let us say chapter number 1 to learn and i have no like many people of my generation i think we have learned a lot of things on our own when i read the first chapter i don't go and read the first chapter i first go and read all the 20 questions as the end of the chapter questions because when i read the end of the chapter questions then i realize i understand that these are what the author things are important so when i read the actual text my mind is on what kind of questions will get asked and therefore that becomes uh, uh, more sensible to read i also don't jump into reading it immediately i look at paragraph headings no good authors put out paragraph headings good writers actually put out some points on the side you quickly survey all this you survey or scan what is there on the last page you survey or scan what are the list of questions that are there you survey or scan what are the head headings and then you read that's a good way to improve your reading trust me your understanding ability will improve manifold if you read aloud it actually helps a lot how did you learn your nursery rhymes in school you were screaming on the top of your voice and if you wanted to catch the teacher's attention maybe you screamed a little more okay that was the reason by sheer reciting people learned better i would still think that that's a nice way to read in your study room go scream okay your younger sister or your younger brother might lock the door to find out what has happened to you okay doesn't matter tell him or her i will come back after an hour and a half after you have read after you have recited after you have done all that you of course need to review you need to look at what you have studied you need to do a revising very quickly this is a study atmosphere not all of us are you no know, gifted to have a house where we could have a separate room for ourselves not everyone is lucky but what i would like to say is that you you could read anywhere you could read sitting in a dining table you could read uh, no in a separate room if you have one but it is always good to read from a fixed place i don't know why but i do know that it works but you shall not read in your sitting in your bed you know why the bed has a particular purpose the bed is meant to sleep and the mind is so conditioned from the time that you were born that if you go and sit in your bed and do something as serious as studying you will fall asleep because the mind is conditioned to think like that keep your reading place as comfortable as is possible it is always good to take uh, notes and when you read it's always good to say no to music no to television and the first one is not no it is yes this is being practical uh, otherwise you will what dose that's very critical in terms of a study atmosphere i'm sure manoharan will later tell you about why a reading room why a study atmosphere is very important i leave it to him to tell you because he has a way with words and he will be able to tell you very well 434 434 kapil dev wickets are brilliant i i like that answer but that was not what i was looking at but your answer is good what is that 434 australia set a target for, to, for south africa brilliant one day international 2006 australia scored 434 in a one day match chasing a total of 434 south africa went on to win the match this was something incredible it was something that had never happened in history commentators had already written of south africa 
This is some score that is just not possible to be achieved. But Herschelis, Gibbs and his set of players who played along with him, they told themselves it was possible. And they went on to score 434 to win. Incredible. If you look at your books and tell yourself, oh, this is a mountain of books. Like, you know, I see on the internet some pictures that come up. People put a CA student and put a mountain of books. <laughs> okay, there's a question of attitude. If you put yourself a mountain of books up there, remember one number. What number? 434. If 434 can be scaled, scaling 350 is not difficult. What is 350? <laughs> scaling 400 is also not difficult and they are not asking you to do it in 50 days. Okay, so when you study, it's very, very important that you are in a positive frame of mind. How to put all this to use? Now, how to put this writing skills to use? How to put this reading skills to use? How to put this arithmetical skills to use? How to be very positive, both in the classroom and in the study holidays? That is what you are going to look up next.